is illegal under uh, U.S. Uh, labor law. So, I mean, that's where we are in terms of of the shutdown, and uh, it's really just a question of putting more pressure on on your senators. And even if you have a, uh, if you put in a question here, and uh, if you get it now, the more that we hear uh, from these folks, uh, the better. Because they've got to go to uh, Mitch McConnell and just say, we can't do your office because it's starting to kill us. And the one thing I would caution, though, as this polling comes out, the top line is that Republicans are going to get the blame uh, big time for this. Even for those people who think the Democrats should not, um, the, the wall should not be built. Most of them are either Democrats or independents. Incidentally, the number of Republicans who think the wall should be built has gone up in the past six to eight months by almost 12 percentage points. So this is the dynamic in this country. Mm -hmm. um, they are... They'll come to their senses, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to happen. Which one of the logical arguments do you think change their minds? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is an increase of 12 points since January 2018. And so you're looking at a shrinking group of people who are becoming more sure that they represent the country is really what it comes down to. And um, this is going to be the dynamic, I suspect, going forward unless there's a big change uh, somewhere. Uh, and I don't know what that change could be. I mean, it's possible Donald Trump would be like, this is actually going to be infrastructure week. And uh, we're going to do this. <laughs> but um, probably not. I mean, we're all waiting for the day that he becomes the president. <laughs> and, uh, the one thing to, 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 that, that, that strikes out in this uh, strikes out to me in this uh, latest poll is that of 54 percent of Americans who oppose the wall, 27 percent say Democrats should continue to resist Trump's demands for 5.7 billion. 23 percent said they should compromise with the president. So Ooh, that poll sounds very promising. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Is there any way we could do a little bit of an inheritance tax relief for my daughter? Let's do a Facebook poll and follow right. up. <laughs> my daughter told me that there's a lot of room for negotiation. <laughs> have you seen the Bailey's post on Facebook? I'll have to ask them. They've been posting like crazy. <laughs> A man who's... I should just say, uh, Schumer lives not far from here. <laughs> That's yeah. true. That's true. And I'm just scanning the audience. <laughs> Super convenient for him to drop by. Whenever we do anything uh, that is outside the office, I always leave a ticket for him. <laughs> and just... <laughs> Protect your neck, Michael. Yeah, yeah, maybe he takes it. Protect your neck. Maybe he picks it up, maybe he doesn't. Uh, he I don't know. Um, but uh, so that's, you know, that's where we are, and I, I don't know. I, I, we're just taking the temperature of people in the room, because we never get a chance to do this um, with 350 people in the studio. <laughs> I'm curious if people would be fine with, let's just call it 10 billion for the wall, if we could get Citizenship uh, for DACA, Absolutely. let's say. Absolutely. And TPS. Continuing protected status for Haitians as well. Yeah. Yeah. And DAPA. All right, let's just phrase that the opposite. Who's against that? It seems like I'd say 90% of you cannot commit to either. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. All right, well, that was interesting. I mean, uh, they all support what I said. <laughs> I'm glad we did. And the interesting thing is, 
is that by now, I think we thought, um, frankly, I thought it Tuesday night, and then I thought it would be Friday night that Trump would declare a national emergency, build the wall. I think there were people in the Democratic Party who were like, that seems to be the best case scenario in some ways because he builds the wall and then he's like, I don't care about the budget. And then the, uh, the continuing resolution passes, uh, the government's funded, and then we just wait for, you know, um, uh, President Castro to, uh, <laughs> to declare a national emergency and uh, nationalize the oil refineries or, uh, or whatever it is. Woo! The real President Castro. But, no, it's not Raul uh, Castro. Oh, the real uh, Castro, okay. And, uh, the Castro I like. But apparently the Freedom Caucus had the same, uh, for them it wasn't a dream, uh, for them, it was a nightmare. And the Freedom Caucus basically came back and said, wait a second, this may blow up in our face. Um, and so the, uh, it, it, it appears that some of the most conservative members of the Republicans have told Trump, don't do this, because you will be setting a potentially a bad precedent. Um, it's an interesting precedent when you think about it, because the Republicans, and there's a downside to this, the only thing that they would declare a national emergency uh, for is probably just to literally start the camps, right? That's the, uh, what was the- A little bit of a downside. Right, that's a little bit of a downside. <laughs> but there's nothing affirmative that they, um, and maybe somebody could come up with something, but there's not as big ticket items affirmative that I think the left would want. For instance, a national emergency to deal with climate change, a national emergency to deal with the fact that tens of thousands of people die a year because there's no health insurance. There's some big ticket items that if the president had that ability, we had the right president, might work out pretty well for the left. Right, and like Julian Castro said, uh, brain power is the currency of the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's um, dynamic leadership. But hopefully there were somebody who might run for president who actually considers those things a crisis. That's true. Um, and, uh, I don't know who. We don't know yet who that's going to be. But <laughs> fucking Tulsa <Tulsigab>. Gap. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's actually get to this. Uh, so... You know, there was a couple of things that I really felt like we wanted to do for this show, right? The, you know, the, the essence of what the show was, but we, we had, we couldn't find a, like a fresh Dave Rubin clip. Who uh, knew? The play. What's that? Who knew? Yeah, exactly. How many people here thinking about shooting a planning studio? Right. <laughs> and so, Dave through stand up. And we have, um, and, and we have some other clips that are sort of like uh, not um, that um, are, are a little bit more uh, evergreen, um, and, and we will get to those. But um, we were going to. I was just going to mention that Tulsi Gabbard is running. We've talked about her in the past. Uh, Julian Castro is also running. He has come out with, uh, you know, again generalities, but they are pretty. Um, he's he's going to run in the in a left lane. Uh, universal pre-K, uh, not a dime in PAC money, Medicare for all, we haven't heard his definition, rejoin the Paris Accord on the first day in office, that's not really that big of a deal. <laughs> Four years after, five years after we got into it, uh, but uh, uh, expand college. Cool. <laughs> his college proposal is trash. Yeah. The other stuff is good. But he's gonna his college, if you get a B plus and you meet with a counselor, right, exactly. you can get a deferred loan to it involves a an Amazon fulfillment center. It's not good. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta pass a ropes course first. A, there's a truck. You have to cross the route as mom did. <laughs> We're gonna take your college and make it wider. Right. Um, he's going to involve some, some type of major housing investment of some kind based on his past. That could involve a lot of private equity, but uh, 
Um, so, and the Green New Deal, which is, so there's a lot of value in at least a guy like this signing on to some of these things. Uh, and it's interesting, it gives you a sense of where the left is, but here's another sense of where some of the left is too. Um,